like to thank you, and I'm proud to introduce the author, Brad C. Anderson, to our program to talk about his book, Duotero. Thank you so much for being here today. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. So, of course, this is a new edition of your book coming out. It has been previously released, but it's picked up by a new publisher. What does this mean for you? It means that uh, I'm really happy with that. It, it means my book gets a new life. Um, so it was originally picked up by uh, Bandorian Press a few years ago, but at, at uh, the owners of that eventually retired and rode off into the sunset. And then I got the uh, the IP for my book again, and I was like, "Oh, what am I going to do with this? And and how do I market this?" And and um, so it, it meant a couple of things when Shadow Shadowpaw Press picked it up. Uh, one, I think it signifies that uh, that. People like the book, like like people believe in the book. Somebody besides me believes in the book, which is good. And yeah, it gives it gives it new life, gives it a new audience, which is fantastic. Uh, I'm really happy about that. Where did the premise for the book come from? Like all uh, like all great literature, it was inspired by a Rob Zombie music video. Um, and it was like late one night, I was watching, I was watching like uh, I was watching music videos, and there was this one Rob Zombie. Sounds cheesy, but it's true. It's like a Rob Zombie music video coming on called The Lords of Salem. And it was about a witch hunter. And um, I don't know, as, as I was watching it, as I was watching the video, I started to kind of think like uh, I, when you see the main character is an animated video doing, doing their thing. It was like, is what this person's seen? Because you see these images of this guy, you know, getting these old crones and witches and things like that. But that is like, is what he's seen actually true? Or is it just what he wants to see, right? And I thought, oh, that's kind of a, yeah, I don't know. I was like, that's a neat premise. Like, because we see the world through this frame of our beliefs and our culture and kind of make sense of the world in this way. And um, I, don't know, I don't think reality necessarily cares about what, what our beliefs are and what our understanding is. Uh, and we kind of have these limited senses to try to make sense of the world. And the world is so much bigger than we're able to comprehend. And uh, yeah, how do we kind of manage that? How do we sort of get the sense of certainty while, um, yeah, <laughs> while the world is bigger than we're able to process? What do you think your book brings to the sci-fi genre? There's sort of two elements, I guess. Like one, one from you know, the science and the science fiction. Uh, my background is in the biological sciences and you don't see a lot of biological sciences being represented in science fiction. Um, and so since I, that's my background more than the physics, uh, so I wanted to roll in, I, uh, you know, the world that I created, the, the indigenous species on the planet that I created, and the, and the um, incompatibility between humans and these indigenous species. Uh, I tried to premise on, on actual real biochemistry and biology. Um, so what's actually happening to the planet and to the people I feel is grounded in biology. So that was something that, uh, you know, I don't see that too often. So I kind of wanted to do that. Um, I don't know, I, I, I like to, the other thing that it brings is, is I like to explore um, the human condition, I guess. And I, you know, I know a lot of sci-fi does that. Uh, um, I, I wanted to add to that as well. I think there's, um, you know, when you when you look out in the world today, there's a lot of people that don't really uh, that don't really give a lot. They don't respect the other side. They don't engage in, in conversations and in discussions and debate. That we've lost a lot of empathy. We've lost empathy for people we believe are on the other side of whatever divide we're talking about. We've lost empathy for that, right? Um, which I think is important because I think you need to build bridges. You need to build bridges. We all have these limited this limited view of reality. We all have a different piece of that view. Uh, and I think we need to build bridges to sort of broaden and, and broaden our perspectives to solve the problems that we have there. But we've lost this ability to build bridges. And so I wanted to create a story that um, was totally outside of our world, totally away from any of the stuff we're actually dealing with in here today, and to create a situation where we could see uh people wrestling with the, their limitations trying to make sense of the world making decisions that we don't know if they're the best decisions or not but we can understand where they're coming from based on their limited reality and then as the story goes on we we learn a little bit more and more about the reality and get some context about the decisions that they're, that they're making there but yeah i wanted to just just sort of yeah create a Create, a, create an experience where we could see and empathize and learn about somebody 
who might be doing some things that that we might or we might not um, think are the right things to do, but at least we can understand where they're coming from. Thank you so much again for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed this.